They're used in the war on terror, but a spy in the sky like this may soon be watching you. They're called drones, basically unmanned planes equipped with cameras. And a police department in our area bought one. The red team's Charles Belay, live for us at Miami Dade Police Headquarters with what this is all about, Charles. Hi, everybody. Get ready to meet the T Hawk. It is drone technology that is being used, very similar to what is being used over in Iraq and Afghanistan in the war on terror. And technology can be very exciting for just about any police department. However, with technology comes concerns about privacy. And tonight, those concerns have been raised. Like something out of the future, surveillance drones look ominous and stealthy. Used for years in Iraq and Afghanistan, one is coming to Miami-Dade County to assist in Miami-Dade Police's special response team operations. Acquired from Honeywell, the 20-pound drone can fly for 40 minutes, reach heights of 10,500 feet, and cruise at 46 miles per hour. It gives us a good opportunity to have an eye up there, not a surveilling eye, not a spying eye, Let's make the distinction, a surveilling eye to help us do the things we need to do, honestly, to keep people safe. But that word spy has some concern, especially the ACLU, which approves of the drones, but wants strict regulations. Technology, there's no reason not to embrace technology if it makes the streets safer, if it helps the police. The concern is, though, that every new technology also has within it the capacity to threaten pri people's privacy. Terrorism expert Douglas K. Haas believes the drones are a valuable new crime-fighting weapon in many respects, not just in police work. This has limit, unlimited capabilities, and not only is it good tactically for a SWAT call-out or a, uh, any tactical situation, there's uh, numerous search and rescue applications for it after a hurricane, they could send one of these up fast and assess damage. But then there is the issue of financial prudence. Should Miami-Dade police be spending this kind of money, especially since the department has made a lot of cuts? Nothing happens quickly in the purchasing process, and that's something that really was in place, the funds for that a couple years ago. Okay, although 7 News cannot confirm this tonight, the purchase of this drone may have been made possible through a federal grant. And if that's the case, it would defer the cost for the police department. We're trying to nail that down for you. And the other thing is, Miami-Dade Police still has to get one, get through one more hoop. Honeywell has already applied to the FAA to get clearance to fly this thing in urban areas. It has never been allowed. And if it does become a reality, Miami-Dade Police will be the first police agency in our country to use this new technology. This is a Raytheon MTSB uh, camera, $2.3 million. Uh, to give you an idea, we can uh, fairly easily tell that someone is carrying narcotics from an altitude of 19,000 feet up to 9 miles away. And we've tracked people as far as 16 miles away at the same altitude. And from those distances of 9 miles, nobody ever figures that that airplane way over there is watching me way over here. So it almost gives you a pseudo-stealth capability. Go ahead. The U.S. versus China, it's looking more and more like an economic Cold War, and it's not just a talking point at the Pentagon. They are planning for real economic threats to America. Our Eamon Javers has the latest on the war games that are playing out in some high councils around your parts. Eamon? Hey, Tyler. Well, you're right. Ever since the crash of 2008, the defense intelligence establishment has really been paying a lot of attention to global markets and how they could serve as a threat to U.S. national security interests. At one upcoming seminar that we're going to see here next month, they're taking a look at a lot of the issues that might be really familiar to CNBC viewers. Take a look at some of the Pentagon's key concerns here. They're looking at the use of sovereign wealth funds to manipulate markets and currencies. They're looking at nation-state economic collapse, sovereign default, and nation-state instability, and they're also worried about U.S. allies' budgets, deficits, and national security infrastructures. And in the Army, they're having a very interesting year-long exercise called Unified Quest 2011. And in that wargaming series, they're looking at the implications of large-scale economic breakdown inside the United States that would force the Army to keep, quote, domestic order among civil unrest and force the Army to deal with fragmented global power and drastically lower budgets. This, according to the 
the trade publication InsideDefense.com. And in October, military officials from the Marine Corps War Colleges visited the trading floor of J.P. Morgan to study markets and the economy. So, Tyler, you can see that all different parts of the Pentagon and Defense Intelligence Establishment are looking at markets and looking at ways they can present a new kind of threat to the United States. These are the guys whose job it is to think about the very worst possible things that could happen, and they've dreamed up some very scary scenarios here. Got All right, Eamon, thank you very much, Eamon Jammer. Eamon uh, just reported about how the Defense Department is looking at sort of nightmare scenarios uh, where there could be sort of basically economic warfare or economic collapse that could be socially destabilizing. I I, I guess we would all agree that, that it's smart to do that kind of planning, but, but do we really need to worry about that? How worried might you be, for example? Well, I don't know how much to worry to be. I mean, I, one likes to think that the world is rational, and therefore most of the things that are being considered are not particularly rational, like destabilizing markets, uh, because it'll affect uh, the, not only us, but the world as a whole, and therefore China. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a worthy thing to to think about these kinds of things, think about the unthinkable. Uh, in particular, I don't want to be too pejorative here, but uh, educating a few generals and colonels about uh, on economic issues, economic and financial issues, probably would make for an even stronger America. <laughs> Eamon, there are those who would argue that... Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, January 14th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Welcome everyone to this news bulletin. I'm going to cover a variety of issues, including the war on terror, liberty, sovereignty, um, the economy, and some big brother. Uh, my website is www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Um, Okay, so th with those two videos that we just watched, one of the things I wanted to point out was the term that they kept using in that second video, the defense intelligent establishment, <laughs> and why it's important for them to, you know, basically uh, uh, to re how to react. They have to know how to react um, in an economic collapse. Well, I thought it was interesting, basically, what that one individual said, the, uh, the older white man with the white hair, who was the first speaker, he was... He basically said, yeah, I think it's, uh, wink, wink, I think it's pretty important to teach the, the military generals a little bit about the economy. In other words, and he, he smirked at the end. In other words, he wants the generals to know that, that the defense and the intelligence, defense intelligence establishment, otherwise known as the military industrial complex, runs uh, basically everything. And that that's what your job is as a general in the military, to serve them. <laughs> that's why he said it the way he said it. So, uh, the other thing was the first video, the drone video. Um, I don't think they're the first ones uh, to be flying drones um, as far as the police department goes. I believe they're doing it in Texas um, as well. So, um, but either way, uh, they were talking about how this is not spying. This is not spying. I'm, and I'm like, okay. So spying is when the people don't, I, I guess what he's getting at, the little play on words that he's trying to be like a little smart ass, is that spying is when the people don't know that you're there uh, gathering intelligence on them. I guess surveillance means, oh, see, we're slaves, we're plebs. See, we see the drone up there. We allow it. We capitulate it. You know, we, 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 you know, we know, we're aware that there's, a, that there's an aircraft up, on, up there in the, in the sky. It's the police department spying on us, right? But it's not spying. They're surveilling us. So, see, it's not spying since we know. That's, that's what I got from that. So um, let's check out this article here. Um, it says here, GPS device keeps track of kids at ski school. And it says here, um, parents nervous about sending their children off to ski or snowboarding school may fret over the possibility that their kids might be cold or get hurt. Um, that's because, you know, this is life, right? And that stuff might happen, but we have to, we have to just surrender all of our privacy, all of our freedom, and go down this road, like that technology road that we were talking about, you know, just blindly. Go down that road and say, you know what? We don't need privacy. We don't need, you know, we don't need to just not really worry so much. And see, they're saying, but now they will no longer need to worry. Well, no, you still need to worry. You're, when, your kid go, uh, when your kid goes uh, uh, skiing, um, they can, you know, break their neck and get killed. So, oh, see, you don't have to worry now because now they have a GPS on them. 
So it says nearly a dozen ski resorts worldwide are starting to use a GPS tracking system for students and instructors called uh, Flake, pronounced like snowflake. A flake is a small beacon the size of a deck of cards that is strapped to the leg. If a student beyond uh, moves beyond a certain distance from her instructor, it sends out an automatic alert. Look at that, guys. It's like a dog or something, right? The distance is set by the ski resort based on the level of the class. So there you go. And um, I thought it was funny. I was like, well, why do you even do this? Why don't you just they already, most of the children now have cell phones. They have smartphones. Th those are GPSs. So why don't, I don't understand this. If most kids uh, have cell phones now, they have GPSs already. Problem solved. So it says GPS enabled phones, the next must have. So here you go. Assuming, as it, it, this, is the, this is assuming, right? This is for the stupid public, I guess, um, who doesn't realize that fact, right? That if you have a cell phone, you can be tracked. How do you think those things get a connection, a signal, guys? They go up to whatever the satellites and uh, they ping back and they tell you your location. That's what they do. That's how the signal is carried and how it's do, uh, located is by your location. So the telecom companies, they know where you're at. So all it takes is basically DARPA, Homeland Security, whoever, right, NSA, they just get free access to the telecom companies. There's not that many of them because we have duopolies. So because we're, you know, not free market, we're a bunch of fascists. So there's only a few companies, and they, you know, they're globalists, and they're fascists as well, like Verizon and, and Comcast. So you can see it in their uh, luminous logos. So basically, yeah, they're all GPSs. So, I mean, you got to be a dumbass, really, to think that, uh, you know, ooh, we're going to start putting GPSs in phones, right? But, you know, say, we're all paranoid conspiracy theorists if we uh, propose that, right? Chinese stealth fighter makes first test flight. And why am I showing this? Only because of the stupid uh, information that's been going out in the mainstream media about this uh, this uh, aircraft about how it was all over the local newspapers I was talking about, and then and then the U.S. came out and said, "Oh, see, no, it's it, that thing doesn't even exist. They haven't even flown it yet." And then I were talking about a test flight, and then I go to this that was out today, F-35, looking more like a white elephant, talking about how it's never going to get off the ground, literally. And I'm thinking, okay, this is the rhetoric that I've been kind of uh, reading about, about the rise of China and the fall of the U.S., you know. So that's all that is, okay. <laughs> Just wanted to point that out because I keep seeing that crap. That's all it is. It's like a Cold War with China. But uh, remember, it's the defense intelligence establishment. They're going to profit off of that. Uh, Baltimore officer was killed by fellow officers. For all those gun advocates out there, Baltimore police say that fellow officers fired the gunshots that killed a plainclothes officer during a melee outside a nightclub. So, And uh, if a civilian accidentally uh, shoots somebody uh, with good intentions, uh, well, he'll probably, what, get charged with involuntary manslaughter. But if a cop does it, well, he gets, you know, paid suspension. Gates warns on North Korea eyes Japan ties. The United States and Japan vowed on Thursday to deepen military cooperation in the face of North Korean belligerence. Uh-oh, so belligerence. And this is what? January 13th. But hey, wait a minute here, Mr. Gates. Uh, you know, just uh, January 8th, North Korea again proposes talks with South Korea. So they're proposing talks. So I don't, I don't get it. What's, what's the mess here? North Korea reiterated Saturday proposal for unconditional talks with South Korea to ease tensions on the divided peninsula. There, there you go. Uh, Iran should not be threatened, says Russia. So Russia has announced threatening Iran with tougher sanctions or the use of force as counterproductive. Next up, Israel calls for attack on Iran. Okay, Israeli uh, Prime Minister Benjamin uh, Netanyahu has called for a credible military option against Iran to force Iran to end its nuclear energy program, which is for, yeah, energy. It says here, Lebanon to start talks on new government on Monday. Leaders agreed on Thursday to start the talks next week on rebuilding a government after Hezbollah walked out of Prime Minister Assad al-Hari's coalition testing political fault lines across the Middle East. Yeah, that's a big deal. U.S. behind instability in Lebanon. Iran's ambassador to Beirut says Washington's interferences resulted in the failure of a Saudi Arabian and Syrian efforts to stabilize Lebanon. The U.S. Uh, did not want Lebanon to achieve peace and stability and therefore tried to impede efforts made to establish security in Lebanon. Uh, Rakhanemi said on Wednesday, quote, the U.S. and Israel have always tried to disturb peace in the region. Next up is Israel. Israel troops on alert after Lebanon government falls. So what do they do? 14 Israeli uh, jets breach Lebanon airspace. So 
Um, next one up, Afghan child killed in bomb blast. And next one up, Afghan girl raped by uh, U.S. troops. And lastly, ex-U.S. Defense Secretary Rumsfeld accused of torture. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Please join me in part two. Thank you.